collagen has been found to have many benefits for skin aging and overall longevity in different uh, ways. But in this video, I'm going to tell you all of the top five best foods for getting collagen into your diet. And you may be surprised that bone broth is not enough. Do it. So obviously there are different ways to get collagen. There's the collagen supplements. There's also a very common method of getting just regular beef gelatin. Collagen rich foods are the bones, cartilage and gelatinous parts of animal protein, such as fish skin, fish bone, poultry skin, poultry bones, beef bones, tendons, ribs, etc. Collagen and gelatin are comprised of multiple amino acids, primarily glycine about 22 to 34 percent, hydroxyproline 7 to 15 percent, and proline 10 to 18 percent. They also contain other amino acids like alanine, arginine, aspartic acid, and glutamic acid. Gelatin is a cooked form of collagen that's slightly different, although with a very similar amino acid profile. Bone broth that forms this gelatin on top after refrigeration does have precursor for collagen synthesis, especially glycine, proline, and hydroxyproline. Unfortunately, the quantities of these amino acids in many bone broths are quite low and uh, therefore it's not like a very reliable source of uh, getting all the collagen that you need. I think that it's a very good idea to, you know, add some bone broth into your diet because, you know, obviously you would just waste away the bones and the, the ligaments and they do give you a lot of these amino acids that you need for collagen synthesis. It's just that if you solely rely on that, then you're just not getting enough of glycine, hydroxyproline and proline from just bone broth. You would have to like drink an entire pot of bone broth to actually get all the uh, required amounts of the collagen and the glycine. So by all means, like keep adding bone broth into your diet in moderate amounts, but uh, you also want to eat the other foods that contain these precursors. Dry gelatin powder has the highest amount of uh, glycine per 100 grams with about 19 grams of uh, glycine. Gelatin desserts, especially the sugar-free ones, are also actually quite high at around 13.8 grams. Pork skin, both the pork skin snacks or pork ears that you can cook are relatively high as well, although slightly less than dry gelatin powder, around 11.9 grams up to 4 grams. White fish, just the fish, especially with the skin, is uh, much lower than uh, gelatin and uh, pork skin, but it's still quite higher in uh, glycine than other meat sources, like white fish has around 4.3 grams of glycine per 100 grams. Chicken skin that you generally eat with uh, drumsticks and stuff has like 3.3 grams, and spirulina, dried, has 3 grams as well. When it comes to proline and hydroxyproline, then uh, you get that from other amino acid sources as well. Gelatin powder is also still a very high source of proline at around 12 grams per 100 grams of proline. Gelatin desserts, again, are very high in proline as well, 8.9 grams, and pork skin is around 7 grams. Parmesan cheese and goat cheese are actually quite high in proline, much higher than other meat sources, so they have 5 and 3.7 grams of uh, proline. The highest source of uh, hydroxy proline is poultry, especially with the skin, so turkey skin, chicken skin, chicken wing, chicken drumsticks. They have around one gram of uh, hydroxyproline. If you do choose to make some bone broth, then here is how to do it. It takes about eight hours of low simmer cooking to cook out 20% of the collagen in bones. Longer cooking times, even up to 72 hours, result in higher concentrations of amino acids in the broth. You can also speed up this process and get more of these amino acids by breaking up the bones that you're about to cook. You can cut the bones or chop the bones with some axe or a big knife, but just be careful that the small bones don't fly off. You can add some vinegar that also helps with the assimilation of nutrients from the bones. Overall, you want to get around 10 to 20 grams of collagen per day, and it's very unlikely that you get it solely from bone broth, so you also have to add the other foods. The optimal amount of glycine per day is around 10 to 15, up to 20 grams even, and uh, it's quite hard to get it solely from diet. So I think most people would benefit from adding like at least 10 grams of glycine as a supplement into their diet. So in conclusion, the best foods for getting the precursors for collagen are bone broth, although it's not like solely enough. You also want to eat fish with the skin, chicken with the skin, uh, gelatin powder, gelatin desserts, and pork skin snacks, and those kind of things uh, you can cook like 
um, you know, the pork that has the skin on, the, that's kind of the best source of high, the highest amounts of uh, glycine, hydroxyproline and proline. However, you also want to get the other precursors that are needed for collagen synthesis, especially vitamin C and copper. Vitamin C is the critical step in actually synthesizing collagen and uh, scurvy, which is considered to be vitamin C deficiency, is actually a vitamin, vitamin C induced collagen deficiency. That's what causes the bleeding of the gums. So you don't, you don't synthesize enough uh, collagen in the gums that result in bleeding and the reason for that is lack of vitamin C. For that obviously you need to eat some different kinds of uh, fruits and vegetables and berries to get the vitamin C but you also want to get copper that you get in large amounts from liver, dark chocolate and beans. If you want to learn more about the benefits of collagen and glycine then check out my new book with Dr. James Nicol Antonio called The Collagen Cure. But other than that thanks for watching this video make sure to click a like subscribe notification bell as well my name is Seem. Stay optimized stay empowered.